From Issa Rae's Insecure to Ava DuVernay's Queen Sugar, black women are ruling the media. But what steps were taken to pave the way for these women today? The portrayal of women has changed substantially since the classic Hollywood cinema era. But in feminist film theory, were black women even considered a factor? Women since the dawn of art and literature have been the object of affection. We see it in paintings, in statues, in poems, in books, and all sorts of things. For example, the story of Helen of Troy, where the Prince Paris basically destroyed the Roman Empire by following this beautiful woman. Women have been objectified as a symbol of beauty. Fast forward to classical Hollywood cinema, and not much has changed. Women are nothing but a distraction of beauty to the male antagonist. Then things changed in films such as Gilda with Rita Hayworth and Gentlemen Prefer Blondes with Marilyn Monroe, where women started to play on the act of being objectified for their beauty. But what about the black women during this time? During the beginning of the film era, black actors and actresses were not given many roles. So the black characters in films were white actors and blackface. But fast forward to the 1930s, we start to see film tropes of certain characters for black actors and actresses. So I will be mainly talking about the female tropes for black actresses. Most notably, we know about the Mammy. She is distinguished by her sex and her fierce independence. She is usually a heavyset woman who is argumentative and strong-willed. The substitute for the Mammy is the Aunt Jemima. She's usually very polite and sweet and always helpful and never argumentative and just an all-around bundle of joy. Most notably, we would have seen this character in films such as the 1930s Imitation of Life and the character Delilah played by Louise Beavers. The Mammy trope can be most associated with Hattie McDaniel's character in Gone with the Wind. The Tragic Mulatto was another film trope introduced during this time. The first time that we would have seen this character was in the film Hallelujah. The character of Chick was played by Nina Mae McKinney. This character is usually playfully sexy and has a duality of a white side that is equal to being spiritual and a black side that is equal to being animalistic. So during this time we were having two different sides of the coin being shown for black women. You either were this strong mammy type character or this overly sexual animalistic woman. For a time, we had a character that was very beautiful and elegant and smart and witty that was not looked at very often. This character was usually played by Lena Horne. Her predecessor was Hazel Scott. During the end of the 1930s and early 1940s, we saw the rise of Dorothy Dandridge. The infamous and beautiful Dorothy Dandridge was the quintessential tragic mulatto. Dorothy's characters were usually portrayed as a doomed, unfulfilled woman who was nervous and vulnerable and struggled with the duality personalities of being able to pass or not be noticed as a black woman. One of her most famous characters was Carmen Jones. Some other notable actresses during this time were Butterfly McQueen, who was also in Gone with the Wind, Ethel Waters, and Lola Falana. These tropes were around for many years until about the 1970s. 
In the 1970s, the black audience wanted to see a change. This was after the civil rights movement and the black audiences wanted to see characters that reflected their views in the world at that time. Movies like Shaft, Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song, and Superfly, to name a few, were some of the movies being cranked out during this time. These films are known as black exploitation films. These films were slick and trendy and sometimes contradictory. They talked about political and social issues that were going on in the black communities. A lot of these films were centered around violence in the urban ghettos of the black community. By the mid 70s, audiences got to see the arrival of the black superwoman. As personified by Tamara Dobson and Pam Greer, they cranked out movies like Cleopatra Jones, Coffee, Friday Foster, and Foxy Brown. These macho goddesses became a hybrid of several previous tropes. They were part Buck, part Mammy, and part Tragic Mulatto. These films read as a high-flung male fantasy. Beautiful, alluring, glamorous women who are willing and ready for sex and mayhem. The films itself dabbled violence and pleasure. During this time, most women of the day did not relate to Tamara or Pam in these films. These women were vigilantes. They were fighting to clean up the drug dealers and the bad guys of their cities. Their characters represented a woman as a protector, a nurturer, and a communal mother surrogate. The film Mahogany starring Diana Ross and Billy Dee Williams was a different type of film during this time. This film focused on a woman trying to reach her way to stardom and her political boyfriend. In 1975, Laura Mulvey wrote Visual Pleasure and Narrative Cinema. This was a feminist film theory, basically talking about how there are two things in cinema. The male versus the passive female. The active male controls the narrative of the story and the female is just to be looked at. She coined the term to be looked atness, basically for the way that women are objectified in film. The male gaze in cinema is basically the way that the narrative is set up. The woman is only there for show. She's only there as spectacle. She doesn't drive the plot. She doesn't make up anything. She's just there to be seen and to look pretty. Femininity is used as masquerade, a series of appearances. In Gilda, we see Rita Hayworth's character using her sexuality and her femininity to get what she wants. But how does this relate to black exploitation films? I would say that it has some truth to it. The black exploitation films were tailored to the black audiences, but does not mean that any other race did not find those films appealing. In the Jane Gaines article, she argues that Laura Mulvey's theory does not work in the film Mahogany. She argues that Laura Mulvey does not take into account of race or sexuality. I will say that Mulvey was probably looking at the films that were before she wrote the article. She was probably looking at classical Hollywood cinema which did not account for race as well. The male gaze in Mulvey's article is mainly talking about the white male gaze. But I can say and argue that in Mahogany the character of Sean does pine after Tracy as well. So she is being objectified in some sort, but the narrative of the story is not solely driven by anyone but Tracy. 
from the 90s black films to today we can see a shift and change on how women are portrayed in film we have films like waiting to exhale and sola got her groove back that focused on the black women and their own struggles within themselves today's media we usually see black females as either strong-willed or overtly sexy it just seems like that's the only way we can be we can't be both but we can hold our own in our own films today as well we don't need a white counterpart to drive the plot like the buddy films in the 1980s such as die hard we can hold our own in our films today a black female can be a standalone character just like Cleopatra Jones or Foxy Brown. Now there's an argument if there is accurate representation of people of color in films today. With this year's hashtag Oscar So White, it has been a hard road for people of color to get really great roles in today's Hollywood. But we're still pushing through. We're still cranking out those great films and movies and this year has been a great year in film for black women and black people. I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it very informative. Until next time, this has been Brittany Boos and thanks for watching.